All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Hopefully, everybody is doing good on this uh, April 14th, Sunday morning here in the Philippines. So uh, I'll wait for people to kind of get into the live stream here before we go ahead and get started. But uh, yeah, right, right now it's showing a big fat goose egg zero. <laughs> so we'll, we'll wait for everybody to pop in and then we'll go ahead and get started here. Uh, let's see. Huh. Oh, here we go. We got some people popping in. All right. First off, we got uh, Big John. I went ahead and hit the like button. Geo always imparts something good to know. Well, thank you, Big John. I, I always uh, appreciate that. So thank you so much. Uh, anyway, uh, today we got a baptism to go to at around 11. And then we're all going to, I guess, an after uh, a lunch afterwards. And I think Maya and I might make a video. So. Yeah, not a real happening day. Uh, yesterday, we had went out for the day and tried a new restaurant, which uh, we're a little disappointed in. And we went up into the mountains, and we were going to make some videos, but um, they just didn't turn out very well. So that uh, never happened. <laughs> anyway, I know I'm. Uh, I know there's another uh, vlogger doing a live stream right now, so we'll see how many people we get though. Hey, good morning, Michael. How are you doing? And Bill Prophet, good to see you. Hey, morning, uh, Michael. Geo, don't know if you remember me or not, but I started watching you before I moved to the Philippines when you were still at One Manchester. I do actually remember you. Yeah, that's that's been a while. Let me see. One Manchester place. I moved there. When did I move there? 2021, I think. 2021. I think that sounds about right. Hey, JJ, good morning. Uh, thanks for being a YouTube member, by the way. Appreciate that. Hey, good morning, David. Uh, Michael says, Gio, why is it that rent deposits are usually kept as it go towards the last month's rent? All right, rent deposits. So in, in the Philippines, uh, when you hand over that deposit, which is why I always tell people, try your very best to negotiate the deposit to only do a one month deposit in the Philippines. Because often, I, I've had this happen where people have late given a deposit and then they've moved out and the landlord has come straight out and said, oh, I'm sorry, I spent your deposit. I don't have your deposit anymore. Um, but you know, the repairs, we got to paint and do things like that. And you're thinking, how are you going to do all these repairs when you've already spent my deposit? So I, uh, I, I don't, uh, that's one thing I negotiate hard on when I move into a rental place is one month deposit. Now, some places, if you are absolutely in love with a place and you can't live without it, then maybe two months is okay, but you got to negotiate at least where the last month uh, will be paid through your deposit or in the last two months possible. Uh, yeah, I think, well, it could, it could mean both. It could, it could mean both. Yeah. Uh, hey, King, how are you? Uh, this show is so for me. I really appreciate you. I just turned 59. I can retire at 60. So I'm really thinking about coming to the Philippines. So believe me, my ears are wide open. You know, unfortunately, the very first thing you encounter when you come into the Philippines is a scam. It hits you immediately as soon as you walk out of the airport, mostly in Manila, also in Cebu, but it is the taxi scam. It's before you've even reached the metered cabs or called the grab or anything, you'll have people approaching you saying, hey, where are you going? And they're going to say... You'll, you know, you'll say, oh, okay, I'm going to stay at uh, the Waterfront Hotel. And they'll say, oh, we can take you there for 500 pesos. And in your head, you're thinking, okay, um, Waterfront Hotel, 500 pesos. What is that, like $10? Oh, yeah, that's so cheap. Because in your head, you're still thinking prices in the U.S. And I don't know about where you're from, but like, for example, when I land in Minneapolis at the end of next month and go to my... Um, 
hotel, it's probably would be like a $60, $70 taxi ride. And so in your head, you're thinking, well, this is super cheap. But in reality, it's not. In, in reality, maybe it only costs 150 pesos. So avoid those guys that come up to you immediately trying to get you into a prepaid type taxi. Avoid it altogether and uh, download Grab on your phone ahead of time. Connect to the Wi-Fi, book a Grab, go to the Grab destination and hop in a Grab. Um, Grab is a confirmed amount, no matter which way he takes you or traffic he gets stuck in, it is that one set price. Now you can take metered cabs, uh, also be careful, make sure that they turn the meter on immediately and uh, maybe even pull it up on Google Maps to kind of follow the route, make sure they're not just taking you all over the place. So yeah, unfortunately, as soon as you land in the Philippines, uh, like a scam awaits you. Every time Maya and I fly somewhere and we land either in Cebu or Manila, you get the taxi guys who are going hard at you. <laughs> uh, I've been lucky. I got my deposit back. Keeping a good relationship with your landlord always helps. Yeah. Like, for example, my current landlord, I don't think that I'm going to ever have any issues. My last landlord at one Manchester place, same thing. And even the one before that in Davao, I found a really good uh, agent who helped me get my deposit back as well. They just subtracted the electric the uh, um, and other things. So it is possible that you'll get your uh, deposit back, but there's a lot of them that will do everything they can to keep your deposit, which is true. No, they usually are willing to negotiate the deposit. In fact, the, the last... Uh, the last place I lived at in, for example, uh, Davao, I didn't even have to do a one month deposit. I actually negotiated down to, uh, for example, the rent was like 25,000 pesos per month. I negotiated to only paying 10,000 deposit, 10,000 pesos, which is around 200. So yeah, you, you can do that. Uh, I started watching in 2021, moved here April 1st, 2022, right after the Philippines opened. Odette was December 2021. I remember watching you quit your life online and make a video about it. Yeah, uh, I, I do remember that well. Okay, so yeah, that would have been around the beginning February, March timeframe or so that I moved into one Manchester place in uh, Mactan, Newtown. Yeah, the, the typhoon hit in December. And uh, it was a crazy, crazy uh, typhoon. I mean, it was walking through a war zone after that thing occurred. So uh, I do grab car before grab taxi. Yeah, yep. Uh, I agree with that, Michael. Um, I don't do that. The grab cars are so much cleaner and nicer. Yeah, I should have mentioned that. Grab taxi is cheaper, but I think they can take you different longer directions because it's just an estimated price as to where grab car is set. Yep. And also you get, uh, you get, these are people's either personal vehicles or they're renting them and they maintain them really well versus a taxi. Maybe they're not maintaining it as well. Um, I've had where you hop into taxis and the, the air con doesn't work or a windows half stuck open. And yeah. Uh, Gio, upon landing at the airport, do you recommend changing money to pesos or waiting to go to a bank? No, um, honestly, it does not make a difference. Uh, for example, if you're going to the ATM, it doesn't make a difference whether you do it in the airport or elsewhere. It's the exact, your bank is going to give you the exchange rate. And uh, the fee is still a 250 uh, peso fee, no matter what. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. So uh, if you're talking about cash, then better to probably go to the mall and do that. Um, absolutely. So, so somebody was asking me about uh, Wise here. Let's see. I think. So, hey, Gio, is, so is Wise the best option for getting money in the Philippines? How does it work exactly? Uh, here is the link uh, to Wise again. It is in the uh, chat. 
Wise um, is basically like a middleman, and you can get an ATM debit card with a Visa MasterCard logo on it. You can use it to withdraw money. It's like a backup. You can use it to transfer money into your Gcash and then withdraw money, which is also uh, cheaper than just going to the ATM for a 250 peso fee. And uh, you can also pay somebody directly. For example, my landlord, I just got his name, his bank, and his account number. And, uh, and then you put it in onto WISE. It'll find the bank. And then once you find the bank, it'll put in the routing and everything automatically. And I just pay him. Um, he comes over and, he's, and he drops off the utilities bill. I pay him with WISE. And it's in his account within 15 minutes. Rent as well. I, I, so rent and all my utilities, I don't even have to worry about going to the ATM anymore. It's just wise to my landlord and it's already done. So fix that there. Yeah, so I, I like I like wise a lot. Uh, I use it for the rent, utilities, send money to my Gcash if I need to. And uh, uh, hey, Jim, getting ready for an island tour in Borka. I hope all is well. Yeah, everything is good, Jim. Uh, it may sound like a dumb question, but wouldn't living on a boat be a decent idea or why not? Uh, the problem with living on a boat is uh, I don't see a lot of areas where you can dock it. Usually, every time I see boats, they're anchored offshore. So, um yeah, so I don't see a lot of harbors where like a lot, a lot of people keep their private boats like on docks and stuff. I just don't really see that. So, uh, don't wait to live your life. The world is going crazy. Apparently, according to the news, Iran just launched a bunch of drones at Israel. Oh boy. Yeah, live your life to the fullest because you just don't know what's going to happen. You, you never know. I. Uh, Gio, when you were single, did you date multiple Filipinas or just one at a time? Because I don't waste, I don't want to waste time only talking to one that possibly could end. Any advice? Well, uh, <laughs> to date multiple Filipinas at one time is never a really good idea here in the Philippines. Because if you go on one date with a Filipina, you're already kind of entering into a relationship. Even though in your mind and, and based on the West, it may not really be a relationship. But for them, it, it's exclusive immediately. It's like, okay, you went on a date. You guys are exclusive. So I can promise you she's not dating other guys. Now, dating multiple, I would just date one Filipina. You can maybe chat with a few, you know, if you haven't uh, um, committed into anything yet. If you've gone on a date with one and you're chatting with others and that one date turns out great then you know you go out again i wouldn't meet any other filipinas until that either turns into something or it doesn't um you know if you get tired of dating after four dates then then you let them know that it's not there's not really a good match and then you date another one so that's how i would how I would do it or how I did it. I didn't date multiple. Like I wouldn't date, go on a date with a Filipina. And then the next night I had a date with a different Filipina and then back to the other one, strictly one date, one girl at a time. Um, my Filipina turned out really bad, but I did get a divorce from her here in Minnesota. The question is, will the Philippines recognize it as we are no longer in should I bring my divorce papers with me? Uh, you have to bring your divorce papers and you would have to file. You could do it through an attorney. I believe you have to file for a recognition of um, recognition of a foreign divorce or something like that. And uh, then they can register it with them. And, and then you're I mean, they recognize that you're divorced. Um, the, the no divorce thing in the Philippines applies really to Filipino to Filipino. They can't stop a foreigner from going to his home country and divorce. Um, you know, it's really meant, it's really meant for Filipino to Filipino. If two Filipinos get married here, 
they don't have an option for divorce, period. There is no option. They can do a separate, uh, they can do a uh, annulment with a lot of money and the fingers crossed that it would go through. Um, but a foreigner, if divorce is recognized in their home country, they could go and do it. But then they would have to, the foreigner, if he wants to come back here and if he ever wants to remarry, he's got to file with the uh, legal system here, recognition to recognition of a foreign divorce, something like that. I don't remember the exact word. I'd hate to live on a boat if a hurricane came. Yeah, that's the problem. If the typhoon comes in, I don't know where you can dry dock it or or maybe you just sail out of the way. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not really a, a boat guy, but so wise guy. <laughs> Uh, thumbs up. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate that. Yeah, if you guys don't mind giving me a thumbs up by, on the video, I always appreciate that. And uh, Minnesota is actually where I will uh, I will be spending uh, my time when I go back to the States here. So, Do I need to open a WISE account tied to my bank here or wait till there? I would open it now and you can connect it to multiple banks. Um, I have it connected to my GCash. I have it connected. I had it connected to my bank when I was living in Vietnam. I have it connected to my bank in the U.S. So you can connect it to multiple. So absolutely get a wise uh, as soon as you can and order the debit card. It's app. Uh, yep. Ah, uh, thank you, Michael. It's a capacity to marry. Yeah. Thank you. That's. Uh, Uh, what is the best time of day to land in the Philippines to get over jet lag the quickest? Well, the best time, if you can time it, would be evening time. So you can just get your hotel, check in, and go to sleep. And then you're kind of going to get onto a regular schedule almost immediately. That would be the ideal time. That's why I always tell people if you land in the morning or the afternoon in the Philippines, try to force yourself to stay awake. Um, in fact, when I get back to the, when I land in the U.S., I'm, I'm going to be extremely tired, I know. But I arrive, I think I arrive at like 6.30 a.m. That's if all the flights end up landing on time, which, you know, never happens. But uh, I'll force myself to stay awake all day until nighttime, so... Uh, if you marry in the Philippines, is it automatically recognized in the U.S.? Well, they they recognize it. Will they be? Will they know about it? And they won't know about it unless you would inform them. Um, you know, like apply for a marriage visa or something like that. But otherwise, they would have no way of knowing unless you tell them. But uh, yeah, they they will recognize that you're married, of course. Uh, yeah, they send the card to your address and they say you can get a wise card here, but the post office here, I don't know. I, I yeah, the post office here, no, they, they don't want to send to the Philippines a wise debit card. Now, again, that's why I use like the traveling mailbox, um, which I, you know, if you have a relative who's more than willing to open your mail, forward it to you whenever you need, then great, you know, save the $15 a month or or $20 a month, depending on uh, what city or, or where you select. But um, if not, then Traveling Mailbox is great. Here's the link to it, to the Traveling Mailbox. That's what I use. So anytime, I, like even if I need a debit card, it might cost me $80 to forward it by Federal Express. But uh, for example, when Maya and I were getting married, I needed my d official divorce papers. It literally got here in like six days, I think. It was pretty fast. Uh, stay up the night before you leave. If your flight leaves during the day, then try to sleep as much as you can on the plane. Yep. I've got uh, eye covers. I got my music ready. I've got the, the neck pillow. I've got, a, I've got it all I'm like prepared to sleep as good as I can. I'm one of those people who literally can um, lay down on the floor and uh, in a crowd of people and sleep <laughs> with noise going off. You know, I, I can sleep almost anywhere. Is it possible to edit videos on iPhone for YouTube? So, 
Sure. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, editing programs uh, that you can do on your phone. Uh, I think Apple has software for that. It, um, I don't, can't remember the name of it, but sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, which airline am I taking to go back to the U.S.? I'm actually taking a couple of airlines. Difference. I think uh, I'm going to Taiwan, and so I think it's Ava, EVA, which is a Taiwan uh, airline. And I got a long way over in Taiwan, but uh, they have a really nice lounge. I, it's like a big tree area with good Wi-Fi. So yeah. Uh, maybe we could meet up when you're here. I do have the first week off in June in in Minnesota. You're going to be in Minnesota, or you are in Minnesota. Where in uh, Minnesota are, are you at? I'm currently looking at flights from Florida to Cebu. The general price range seems to be about 1.2 to 2k. Does that sound pretty average, or have you seen a lot better prices? Uh, Florida to Cebu, or are you talking about a round trip, or are you talking one way? Uh, I got, I, I didn't do round trip. What I did was book one way first and then I booked the other way when I knew exactly when I was coming back. Um, I like doing it that way a little better. Sometimes I feel like I get a better rate. Um, but I play around with it quite a bit before I, I make the purchase, but I think I paid 2000 round trip. Yeah. About that. I think about. $900 one way. Part of that was because I upgraded and spent another 200 bucks to upgrade my seat. So yeah, anything really important I do FedEx. Yep. Yeah, FedEx is the way to go. I'll be traveling to the Philippines, Manila, late October, November for a few weeks. I'm excited for that 16 hour ride. Yeah, that's a killer. 1100 round trip park to chicago that's really good that's really good oh okay twin cities yeah i will uh, actually be you know i land at the course in minneapolis um i'll be in hudson wisconsin for a little bit i'll also be doing some camping up at taylor falls uh and I'll be actually going, stopping off in Brainerd in Duluth as well for a quick uh, trip. Other than that, uh, most of my time will be around the Woodbury, Hudson, Stillwater area. Hey, Gio, I bring you to the gym to listen to you. Oh, man, you must be really bored. <laughs> I don't know if I could get motivated listening to uh, somebody talk while I'm working. I got to have music. Um, but I have a trainer now. Maya and I are using the same trainer. So I've got music in one ear and the other ear. I don't have my earbud because I need to listen to them. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure I could probably make some, some time or something. I can try my best. Uh, I recommend Google Flights to book. They have a calendar view with different departure and return dates. Yeah, Google is good. Um, Sky scanner is good as well. I had the assumption that you needed to show a round trip ticket when going to the Philippines. Is it acceptable to just buy one way? You can buy a one way and then you can buy a throwaway ticket if you're going to be more than 30 days and you don't have a round trip, then you need a throwaway ticket. Uh, and the one that I use costs $16. Um, it's the one that I always use. Um, I'll be using it when I fly back here as well. Here it is right here. Great cigar shop in Hudson. Okay. Do you recommend first class for a flight to the Philippines or is economy doable? Hey, if I could afford first class, I would be, be flying first class, but I don't really have the extra money for first class. But what I do is I do get the emergency exit. And, you know, you can see on, on the, um, it shows you like the little uh, map of the, uh, of the seat arrangement. I choose um, emergency exit where I can literally get up at any point without disturbing anybody and go to the bathroom and come back. I don't like to have to squeeze by somebody to get to the bathroom. Um, 
I got the bladder of an 80 year old. So I can't I go to the bathroom a lot. I love Filipino food, but is it common for foreigners to get sick from street food there? Uh, you know, most of the time people are okay from street food. Like if you're, if you go to a street food place that has a high turnover, like it's popular, they're cooking constantly. Um, and it's nothing that's been sitting out a long time. You're usually safe. And, um, I, I tell people, I say, yeah, try the street food, you know, why not? But if you're going to a place where the street food is, even Maya probably is not going to eat street food that's been sitting out a long time. Am I right? If you're looking for street food, you want someplace that's somewhat popular, that they're constantly cooking and stuff. You know, anything that's sitting out, flies landing on it. We had this problem in Thailand even, um, which is why I got sick on uh, some food. So as long as the food is being cooked and um, they got a lot of customers coming in and out, it's fresh. Hey, try it. Why not? Uh, the thing you most have to be careful about is the water. And I think a lot of people forget like about ice cubes. Avoid ice cubes. Just get a cold bottle of water. Ice cubes, that's something you can do later on when your body kind of acclimates to the bacteria here. Listen, every, every country has got different strains or different types of bac bacteria, and it takes your body a little while to get used to that, you know. Are you looking forward to the lower humidity? Uh, you know, honestly, the humidity doesn't bother me so much. I'm, I'm really, I mean, God, I've been here eight years, guys. I've, I've pretty much adapted now to the weather here. Um. The sticker shock is going to be crazy for me. Not in a good way either. <laughs> and I, not only that, I'm, I'm paying for food for myself, but also my sons, you know, will be with me. So it's going to be a little expensive. Uh, a few business, I flew business class from Japan when I moved here, but it was a short trip and I thought I was moving for good. So kind of a present but generally, I'd rather save money on the seat and use in the country. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it's worth it to get the emergency exit. I had to pay two hundred extra dollars to get that emergency exit seat for the long flight. For the shorter flights, like from here to Manila or Manila to Taiwan, I, I wasn't worried about paying the extra money for the upgrades. But the long flight from uh, Taiwan to Los Angeles. Then I went with the more expensive seating. Same with the return trip. I did the same thing. Uh, hey, Joe, I have a robbery on my record from six years ago. Do you think this will be a problem with me getting into the Philippines? Well, if they were willing to give you a passport, then I don't think it'll be a problem. Uh, my understanding is it's things like, um, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't think it'd be a problem. So. Italy versus Croatia at the Euros, June 24th. Can't wait. Go Croatia. Love Italy. <laughs> well, I'll be rooting for Italy, of course. Uh, thanks, Joe. You. you just saved me with the throwaway ticket advice. I have no idea how long I'll want to stay. Yeah. Use that link that I sent you. Um, purchase a ticket uh, leaving within 30 days. Of course, you never use it. It actually expires and um, in, in, your, in your golden. Now, don't be surprised. You may not ever even be asked for it. But if you are asked for it and you don't have it, guess what? You're going to be right there on the spot purchasing a ticket, stepping out of line, and it's going to be a pain. So for $16, have the ticket and uh, be ready. And not just the sticker shock. If you don't tip for literally everything, they look at you like you're, you killed their firstborn. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Uh, for expats moving to the Philippines, will they need electrical adapters for their electronics due to different electrical outlets? Uh, you, do, you do need like little adapters maybe for the plug um, versus like three prong or two prong. Um, Malaysia was quite weird. Malaysia had these weird sockets, remember? Yeah. Uh, but as far as... Um, an adapter, laptops, uh, phone chargers, uh, charging cords. 
none of that usually needs it. But if you want to bring some other type of electronics, then you might need a currency converter. I bought, you can buy it here. I bought a big uh, step up or step down or step, what is it? No, step up converter because we have the cured coffee machine and we also have like a mixer to make protein shakes and stuff. Uh, sometimes Asian airlines have smaller seats, remember. Also remember being stuck with two huge guys that also bought extra legroom seats. Not un most uncomfortable flight ever. Yeah. I mean, it's a gamble. I mean, you could you, you don't know exactly what you're going to get, but uh, I have to go with the emergency exit for the extra leg room and hope that either the seat is empty or it's a small, petite uh, old lady that's next to me. We'll see. <laughs> Do you think 2K a month is enough to live comfortably in Cebu? Yeah. I was, I was living comfortably on about 1.5. 1500 a month as a single guy living in a condo of course prices have gone up now so it depends where you live and everything but yeah i, I still think it's very doable i can't comment upon philippines but in cambodia the hollow ice cubes are frozen from safe water that's either pure or treated i would assume in the philippines that most of the ice is probably from safe water but i can't uh is it the ice cubes? When you get ice cubes, is that bottled water that they use? Is it safe? Where's it? Maya says it's safe water. Um, so I I don't know. I've never been in I've never been in the back of a kitchen here in the Philippines to see how they do it. I I assume they use the bottled uh, safe water. They have ice delivery here, which always um, seems so funny to me. Because, you know, in the U.S., like every restaurant has an ice making machine, just like endless ice. And, you know, in the U.S., when you ask for a drink, they literally fill your glass all the way with ice. So really, I mean, they do that because then that way they only have to give you like this much Coke. <laughs> your whole glass is filled with ice so you're getting ripped off. Here in the Philippines, you'll get one or two ice cubes in, in a full glass of Coke or whatever. Um, I, I don't drink soda any, anymore. I haven't drank soda in a long time. Once in a blue moon I have, but uh, I probably won't even do that anymore. <clears throat> Bring a splitter so you need only one adapter. Yeah. Even Filipinos only drink bottled water, so the service water and ice at restaurants are treated. Yeah, that makes sense. Careful when you're maybe uh, like salads or something or things that were washed off with just regular tap water perhaps um yeah my first three months in the philippines i was um i spent a lot of time in the bathroom and after three months like it's uh it just kind of went away my body just kind of adjusted to it and uh i don't uh, i don't have any issues anymore i did in thailand thailand oh my god i was super sick in Thailand for like literally, I think a day and a half or so, right? Two days. Well, which kind of ruined my experience because I was really looking forward to eating a lot of Middle Eastern food, a lot of Thai food. And so I kind of missed out on two two full days of eating, you know? And that was one of the things I was really looking forward to in Thailand. Do condos in the Philippines usually require three months rent up front? What's your experience with the initial rental process? Uh, that's what I was talking about earlier. Negotiate, negotiate, negotiate on deposits. Try your very best to only do one month deposit. Um, for me, I rather have, for example, I rather only put one month deposit versus uh, trying to get the rent itself to lower down. Like I rather have the rent if they are asking for twenty five thousand a month for rent. I rather not even negotiate that and, and negotiate more on the deposit versus that. Um, I uh, so you know you can negotiate on all kinds of things here. Everything's open for negotiation. And the Philippines is basically the ninety-day crud. Yeah, I mean it's like Mexico and any a lot of these type of countries. 
I skipped your question, your visa. Oh, let me go back to it. I didn't realize I skipped it. Oh, okay, Geo, for foreigners who are staying long-term, do you recommend longer or shorter visa renewal periods? Maya says hello. <laughs> Say hi, babe. Hello. Um, I, I would do the shorter. Um, again, I, I've told people this before. I'm really more of a, I don't like the exit clearance thing that you have to do at six months. So for me, I rather do shorter visa extensions and duck out every six months not to have to do the um, exit clearance. I just don't like the whole fingerprinting, the whole bringing in the photos, they run a check on you, they ask you all kinds of questions. Um, I, I don't like that. If I want to go fly somewhere, I just want to be able to buy my ticket, go to the airport, and leave. I, I hate all the extra things that I have to do. So I don't have to worry about that because Maya and I literally travel every six months out of the country. So it, uh, it hasn't been a problem. Uh, let's see, I did that. Uh, that. I've never gotten sick on street food in Thailand, but the street food in the Philippines always makes me sick. So I stay clear of street food here. Well, I got sick on really bad in Thailand off of the street food for, for two days. Um, I don't, I'm, I just don't, I don't really love a lot of the street food here in the Philippines, like uh, things like balut. I do like the barbecue. Um, I don't like the chicken intestine, but like regular barbecue pork skewers or things like that. Um, they have something called, uh, quack, quack, quick, quick, quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the, the, the little duck eggs um, with batter and deep fried. What is it called? Brick, brick. <laughs> Maya's making fun of me. Hey, ha happy Sunday, Michael. Yeah, all is good here. I had to pay one month plus security deposit in both one Manchester and here at 8 Newtown Boulevard in Michael Newtown. One month, okay. That's good. I've been to Thailand and Mexico. Never had issues in Thailand. I was in Mexico for six months on the toilet eight times a day. My stomach could never handle Mexican food, even though it tasted good. <laughs> uh, I spent quite a few time in Mexico, too. And I, not like six months or anything, but I did a three-week trip one time. And uh, I think I had the diarrhea a couple times, but yeah. Supposed to get security deposit back, but it never happens. It, it's quite often. Yeah, you almost have to write it off. Hope for the best, you know, but uh, prepare for the worst. How's the social media changing Filipinos in general? Does it have a very negative effect on them? Well, uh, the one thing I will tell you is I think Filipinas now have more options than ever. So back in the day, like when I first got here, Filipinas had to go to like internet cafes to chat with a guy. And so they weren't, they weren't all over the, they might be on the dating site, but you may not, you may chat with a Filipina on a dating site. And it might be three days before you hear from her again, because she doesn't have the money or anything to always go to the internet cafe. Like I remember talking to a girl, it was like nine years ago before I even moved here. I remember having a conversation with a Filipina and she was like, well, um, I'm not sure when I can chat with you again. Uh, whenever I get some extra pesos, I'll see, I'll see if I can get to the Internet Cafe. And that's how it was. So there wasn't a lot of influence. Um, they weren't on. They didn't have data on their phone all the time. They usually were just using free Facebook Messenger. Uh, so they weren't like. Uh, scrolling on Facebook or they weren't scrolling through TikTok. TikTok didn't exist. So yeah, I would say it's having, it definitely it's having an effect. They have more options than that ever now, now that they're all connected to the internet. They can go into the mall and get free Wi-Fi. They can go into uh, different stores or maybe a friend has Wi-Fi and they can connect through their neighbor. So they have more options than ever to get online and dating sites and chat with uh, 
a lot of different guys, and that doesn't mean um, the 70-year-old guy. You know, she has the opportunity to go chat with maybe a 30-year-old guy, where a lot of that, they didn't uh, have that opportunity before. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely changed, yeah, for sure. Can you still find a great quality traditional Filipina here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I first moved here, I made the mistake of doing a six-month extension. Two months in, I took a trip to Thailand and wasted four months on my visa. Now I won't do more than two months at a time. Um, I'm not on the tourist visa anymore, but if I was on a, still on a tourist visa, that is what I would do. Um, I would not do the six-month uh, extension anymore. Joe, I remember you cheated on the balut eating contest. Uh, I can't remember if I did. Did I eat the whole balut, Maya, last time? I don't think I did. No. Yeah. That little duck face was, was yelling out at me. Don't eat me. So, lino legs. Oh, okay. Have you been to the uh, Mung Flea Market? No, I haven't. I haven't. That sounds interesting, though. Uh, now it's send me load. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to chat with the Filipina now, um, this is the, the one time where I say, if you're chatting with a Filipina early on, I tell people don't send money, but you can get onto things like, um, uh, ding connect or ding.com or if you have a Gcash or Wise, or you can even send uh, through Wise, but you can send money to um, and, and sign up and send money for load to a Filipino directly. You can give them, you can sign them up for a uh, oh, a seven day plan or something like that. So you can do that pretty easily now to their number. And that's the one time I would say it's probably okay. If you're talking to a girl who's way out in the province and she doesn't have the money to buy a load and do video chats and, uh, you know, a couple hundred pesos every few weeks or so. If you're really interested in somebody, I'd say it's fine. They have more options, but most of us guys never come to see them. Big bonus points if you're actually planning to come to the Philippines. More bonus points if you're willing to go to the province. Um, that's a, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a very good point. Most guys don't really want to go way out into the province. Most guys just want to fly into Cebu, maybe Dumaguete, maybe Ilo Ilo, maybe Bacolod, anywhere that's got an airport. And if they if you can fly in and there's an airport, that's where they want to meet Filipinos. So if you are willing to go all the way, take a trip, you you know, you fly into a city and then you got to hop on a bus and then you got to take a little tricycle uh, to go meet a girl out in the province, then uh, you have an advantage because most guys aren't willing to do that. So, yeah, I totally agree with that. Not sure if you can do the six month extensions anymore. They only do two months where I live. Well, my friend, um, actually my neighbor, just uh, did a six-month extension here uh, in Dumaguete. So I guess maybe they are doing them again. Uh, I'm excited. Social Security told me I won't lose my disability and I can do my passport next month. I guess it takes three months to get. I'm excited this will be my first plane trip, let alone first time going. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. Well, you know, um, I mean, you can do ex expediting it in about six weeks if you want to go quicker. Uh, that's good to know. For if I decide to move there, I took a trip there in February, had bubble guts like crazy. I was scared to go far from my room out of fear that there wouldn't be toilet paper. <laughs> well, uh, bring baby wipes. I always bring a, a little package of baby wipes, so. You like my waterfall videos? What happened? I want to see more nature. You know, I used to do all these waterfall videos, and it just seemed like nobody was really interested in seeing all the nature. So maybe I go back and, and throw some of those in there because uh, – and, and also a lot of times Maya will do those too. So 
But uh, yeah, maybe I'll do some videos where I'm just talking in front of a waterfall or something. I don't know. What's wrong with doing six months? I've done six months since I got here. Unless you plan on traveling out of the country a lot. Is the price for two months not the same as price for six months? Just times three? It's the same price. The thing is, is um, I don't like the exit clearance. I don't like doing these six month. Um, if you're here more than six months, I don't like doing the exit clearance. I don't have to do that now because I'm not on a tourist visa. But again, I, I really probably I like to be able to leave. So without any kind of a headache, I do the six month and immigration officer comes to Depolog every Friday. Easy. Oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't know they had that service. Gio, for those not used to it, what is your recommendation for dealing with begging children? Um, if it's just one kid, sometimes I just give a few pesos. If like in Cebu, you'll get like the whole swarm of them. Um, keep your hand on your wallet, keep your hand in your pocket so they can't reach in and grab something. Same with your phone. And uh, just say, or you can say, uh, Walla Cocorta. That's in uh, Basayan. That's I don't have any money. Or you can just say, just walk away. Say no, no, no. But keep your hand on your uh, on your wallet and your phone. And everything. Can you make me a coffee, baby? Please. Here, I have an empty cup. So I'll use this one. Thing. And you have to go to BI more. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Just baby talk. Oh, oh! I was doing baby talk. Yeah, I didn't even realize. <laughs> Bad habit. I'm on a live stream doing baby talk with my. <laughs> uh, let's see. The ninja van just messaged me. I got a couple of Amazon shipments. Excuse me, guys, while I carry on my day. <laughs> no, I just said. Uh, Ninja Man, that's who delivers the Amazon packages, and they are uh, delivering. I guess he's asking me if I'm home. Like, I can never understand what they're saying. They just message me. You know, yeah, you guys can see that. I just assume he's asking me if I'm home. Is he asking me if I'm home? Yes. Yeah, he, there's, somebody will there's somebody will receive the package. Yeah, I just guessed. I, I, I guessed right. Hey, good morning, Carl. Very excited about the cost of living. Yeah, that's the one thing. You know what? You, you know what I really love is the fact that I don't even have to look at the menu or look at the cost before I walk into a restaurant here. I can go into a restaurant and it really doesn't matter anymore. But guess what? One of my trip to the U.S., uh, when me and my sons walk into a restaurant, Guess what I'm going to be doing before I even take a seat? And I'll say, let me look at your menu first. Um, yeah, you have to. <laughs> uh, keep up the good content. I appreciate you sharing your experience in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. I need a way to get around the express fee. They always charge me an express fee after I get the visa extension if I'm the only one there. Yeah, I don't understand why they do that. Do they do they do that online as well? Um, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know if they do that uh, for everyone. I think somebody told me um, that um, that you can not do it in a certain BI offices and other BI offices. You have to. All right, let's see here. Are there any lighthouses in the Philippines? Yes, there are. I went to one in uh, northern Cebu. I took a motorbike trip. And in fact, I did a video. Actually, I have a video out there about that road trip. I used to do a lot of motorbike road trips and make videos, uh, but they're older. Always carry toilet paper and diarrhea pills in your day pack. Most restrooms never have toilet paper. Yeah, even better, I would say, are baby wipes. Bring packages of baby wipes. You can; those are like multi-purpose. You know, wipe your sweaty face or dirt on your arms or whatever. Uh, you want to see more apartments for rent? I can do that. 
I, I was doing that for a little while, and it looked it seemed kind of seemed like people were getting a little bored of it. So, thank you, babe. I won't. I I, I didn't do the baby voice. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm making eleven hundred in Social Security and have ninety k in a four hundred one k. And my good to move and live permanently in the Philippines. Well, uh. It's going to depend on it's going to depend on what your lifestyle is like and where you want to live. So that is hard to answer. I would have to have more details. People ask me this all the time. Can I live on two thousand a month? Can I live on one thousand a month? And you know, it depends on your lifestyle. Depends where you want to live. Do you want to live in BGC, Makati? Do you want to rent out a three-bedroom condo? Do you like eating steak and burgers all the time? Do you like do you scuba dive? Do you smoke and drink a lot? You know, it's just so so much to. I'd have to know. Looking for a furnished house to rent. I've had enough of this Manila. Uh, a furnished house in Dumaguete. They never grab anything from you. Just reach their hand out. And if you ignore them, they'll walk away. But sometimes they follow you. Yeah. We get the uh, Bajau here, which they come from Mindanao. Baby talk all for long. <laughs> Gio, have you ever been to Harlech? If so, are there any cheap places to rent? How far from now? I've never been to, to Tarlac yeah. Gio, your haters are going to record your baby talk moment and play it over and over on an upcoming video. It wouldn't surprise me. Shirts with inside pockets. <laughs> can you get seat bidets in the Philippines? Yeah, you can. My landlord put one in at the Airbnb. It's like the Japanese style. At the end of anyone's trip, you'll have tons of coins and single pesos left. You can give those to them. Yep, that's true. I was told the last time I was in Dumaguete that they syndicate ships, syndicate ships and beggars in Dumaguete over from Cebu to make money for them. Well, uh, the Bajau come from southern Mindanao, like the Zamboanga del Sur region. And they are where a lot of the uh, beggars come from and they come and they go all over the Philippines. Folgers coffee. Yeah. Yeah, you can. I've seen a video of a kid sitting on the street. They asked him where his parents are. He pointed at some bar there out there drinking. These kids are not your liability. Their own parents don't care. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's sad, but yeah. Uh, Peter, I plan to propose to my girlfriend next year. Is it okay to propose in an in, in an expensive hotel room? Do you also rec recommend to propose on first day or second day in a hotel? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I would probably do the second day in the hotel, make sure things are going okay. But why in the hotel room? Or maybe uh, if it has a real nice balcony with a view or something, that could be nice. Yeah. 130 people in the room hit the like button. Yeah, I appreciate that. Also depends on how long you plan on living. Yeah. Around that area. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I can look into doing some more videos on rentals. Uh Sometimes I, I do like the whole series. I did a whole series of like rental videos and then I stopped for a little bit. So I could go back into making a few just to show people what uh, is available. So I have to say, Gio, you have a sense of humor. Some bloggers would get pissed at that baby talk comment. No, no, I, I, I have a sense of humor. Uh, hey, from Queens, New York, did you... Ever have a landlord ask your social security number on an application? I'm in the legal field. No way I'd heck risk that. No, no. They have no 
they don't care about our social security number. If somebody's asking for that, absolutely not. Pro Happiness Italiano. Filipina girlfriend financially supports family with my money. Repeated requests to pri prioritize us ignored. Feeling strained financially. Still visiting Cebu in June. Need advice. Well, this is hard because supporting a family here in the Philippines is just part of the natural order of things and how it's done. It's customary. It's part of their culture. And to go against the grain of their culture is going to cause um, issues. But um, there has to be some rules and everything set in place. And there has to be, listen, this money is going for you and for you to support yourself. And, you know, it's priority is us and family is going to be second. And if she can't, do that, then I would start looking elsewhere for a different girl. So I'll let other people uh, add to it. Don't do it. Marriage is like playing cards. You first start with hearts and diamonds and later you're searching for a club and a spade. <laughs> that's, that's funny. I proposed somewhere where they didn't know how much money I had. Do hotels in Manila offer monthly rates? Some probably do. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you can get uh, a monthly rate on it. Airbnb, though, is probably best if you're going to do monthly. So I have um, successfully got off of sugar in my coffee. So that was like one of the big things. Uh, it was hard to do. Did I, did you skip my question? Uh, I don't think so, Peter, but let, let me scroll back up. Oh, no. Uh, I answered that. Did you miss it? Yeah, I, I said, um, is it okay to propose in an expensive hotel room? I said, yeah, I would probably do it on like, like if it has a balcony with a really beautiful view, like at night or something. That could be romantic. Uh, I would do it on a second day. Yeah, I, I answered it. Actually, a bill in the Philippines government was looking at over the past two months would make it law that kids have to take care of the parents. Yep, I've seen that. Yep. Strange this didn't come up for you in chat. Yeah, I saw it. I, I read it. Um, strange. Nice job getting rid of sugar. Just don't replace it with this. Um, how do you, I don't even know how to pronounce that word. I consider that stuff worse. I've been using uh, Truvia and Stevia is what I've been using. Is, is that okay? Fun things to do in Cebu with a partner? Absolutely. I'd kind of, I you know, I'm really into nature. Um, are you going to rent out a motorbike by chance? Because there's a great motorbike ride up Busai with beautiful coffee shops. Um, but get up into Busai. You got these, uh, you got these mountain resorts that have, um, you got these mountain resorts that have, uh, swimming pools, like with its beautiful views. You got coffee shops and restaurants and Zip lines up in Busai. Busai is great. Also, uh, they have Upside Down World, which is really cool. And um, to do pictures and stuff with your Filipina, that's a lot of fun. Uh, so, yeah, all of that's uh, a lot. Of, that's fun. And, and down south, there's a lot of uh, waterfalls and things. Have I met Filipino P? Yeah. Uh, P and I did a video um way back when um here let me see if i can find it way back before she even had a she didn't even have a thousand subscribers when we did um a video um so here i'll get the uh yeah if you guys haven't seen it here's the video 
this was Filipina P before she even had a thousand subscribers. Um, we were on together. Uh, I think we chatted for like three hours. So, Stevia, yeah, Stevia is good. Okay. Geo, a police response and fire department response times close to what we experienced in the U.S. Not at all. No, you'll uh, you'll have been shot and killed, and you'll have uh, been robbed. Uh, your house will have burnt down by the time anybody comes. <laughs> no, they, they don't have a good response time. Uh, now, places like Davao have a little bit better because they have nine one one in place. Stevia is all natural and no known negatives to it. I once stayed at a pharmacist who mixed the liquid batches in Henry Ford Hospital in Michigan. She swears by it over all other sweeteners. Well, um, Truvia here is really good too. So. Is the 27-hour flight rough from Atlanta and is it better to land between 9 and 10 p.m. at airports there? From Atlanta, is it better to land at like between 9 and 10 p.m. At, at airports here? That's a good time to land. It's not as busy for sure. So there's a lot of fun things you can do with Barnard Cebu, but you can also go outside. <laughs> but I'm okay. I'm considering taking my Filipina to Vietnam. No visas required for her. But do they need to get any kind of clearance to leave the country? Okay, so Maya and I went to Vietnam. I had to have an e-visa. She did not. Um, I believe that they get 30 days or 21 days or something like that. I'd have to go back and look because things have changed a little bit. Um, as far as uh, clearance to leave, yeah, she does have to go through immigration. She's got to pay her Filipina tax or whatever for leaving, I guess. And um, yeah, uh, you just have to do that. So if she hasn't traveled before, this is where you could run into some issues. Um, our trip, our first trip to Thailand, Maya was questioned for about 45 minutes through immigration. We have since learned that we travel together through the immigration line together. Don't separate because when you get to the immigration, on, on the left, it'll say Filipinas for Filipino passport holders. On the right, it'll be foreign passport holders. So generally, I assumed, okay, Maya, you go that way, and I go this way, and I'll meet you on the other side. Well, I'm on the other side, and 45 minutes later, she pops out. And I was, like, really worried. I was like, oh, shit, she's been offloaded. But they were questioning her. And I've since found out that we can travel or we can go through the immigration together, both going through the foreign passport holders together. Don't have her go through the Filipino passport holders. She's got to show a return ticket. She's got to show that she's got like a bank account, enough money that she can get back to the Philippines if she had to. For example, if you just left her high and dry in Thailand and abandoned her, she would have the money on her own to be able to get back. So... Uh, did you find your house through Lamudi or Facebook Marketplace or someplace? Now, this particular place I found just driving by. But uh, Lamudi has been great. Facebook Marketplace, I usually just put out an advertisement and uh, you can find um, a good place. Yeah. <laughs> Are there places to get fresh banana bread and other baked goods nearby? Uh, Travis is my neighbor. He's making a joke because Maya makes banana bread. Sometimes she'll like sell it. He, he bought it recently. First, she, first she gives out samples to get people hooked, you know, uh, craving it. And then, and then she sells it. So he bought some just recently. That's funny, Travis. Uh, when I first arrived, I was living with my wife and her family. I was paying for the electric and internet. After a while, my wife wanted to get our own place. She was upset her sister was not helping. Her sister was not helping with um, paying the bills at her parents' house. That that happens. 
often sometimes I, I don't get it like how all the family members sometimes will be sitting around and it's one family member who is keeping the family afloat while the rest of them are just being lazy. Yeah. I'm thinking about taking my girlfriend to Shanghai because they have Disneyland there, but was curious about the process also since she has never been out of the country. I'd hate to be stuck going alone. Doesn't, uh, well, you know, honestly, if I was going to go to Disneyland, I probably would go to Japan, Tokyo. Um, I think that'd be better. I, I'm actually planning a trip to, I would like to take Maya to um, Universal Studios in Singapore. But I don't know if it would be anything like the same at all. But maybe it would be. Not going and wasting uh, the money now. Besides, it's going to be nothing like the real Disney World in Orlando. If I take Maya to Disney World or a Disney, it would be the one in Orlando probably. But it's so freaking expensive, man. What was the name of the place you talked about a few minutes ago with the winding road up to pools? Um Oh, uh, Busai. I'll type it in the uh, chat box here. Don't you find it ironic when the parents don't take care of their kids, but then expect their kids to take care of them in old age? Yeah. Yeah. Warm banana bread with butter. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maya makes great banana bread. I'm trying to cut back on the carbs and stuff. So, Universal Osaka, Osaka is much better. Is that in Japan? Uh, how did you and your girlfriend meet? Well, we're married. We're not boyfriend girlfriend anymore. Uh, we got married last year. But one method that you can use is just simply, like, for example, let's say you're going to go to Cebu. You can type in on Facebook, you can type in in your in your search, you can type in Cebu and uh, it'll bring up. OK, it'll bring this up. I don't know if you can see it here or not. Let me try to show it. Uh, it's not really showing up. There we go. So up at the top, it'll say people. And you can click on people. It'll bring up uh, different people, you know, that you can, um, and you can find a, a Filipino that you find attractive. Click add. And maybe she messages and says, how did you find me? Or uh, or she might accept and you, and you say, oh, she just, you just showed up as a recommended friend. Anyway, something similar is how, how I met Maya. I did that with like with Dumaguete. Maya popped up. I found her attractive. I added her. Um, I posted a post about a restaurant I was eating at, and she said, oh, that's one of my favorite places. And uh, next thing you know, we were on a date, and uh, there we go. Osaka. Okay, Osaka. Yeah, Japan. Another question, Vietnam for a Filipina who has never been out of the country. She has no bank account. Should I have her open one, deposit money? Do they check? Does she need police clearance? She doesn't need a police clearance. Uh, she definitely needs a bank account. You got to open her up a bank account and, and she needs like a debit card with a Visa MasterCard logo. And you got to have some money in there because they asked Maya for they wanted her to pull up her bank account. So absolutely. Can't marry the oldest in the Philippines family or you're taking on all the bills of the whole family. Yep, that can happen. The Disney in Japan is considered by many the best Disney in the world. They also have an aquatic park there, too. There's a small Disney park in Hong Kong, and it's easy for Filipinos to go to. Oh, thank you, Stan. Uh, and by the way, thank uh, shout out to my YouTube members. I appreciate that. Uh, all you guys who are members, appreciate that. But... Uh, I'm just curious, so is, are the prices for Disney in uh, Japan, Tokyo, are they 
same prices as the U.S. or are they even more expensive? Just curious. Yeah, I think if we went to like a Disney, probably would be with Maya's daughter as well. So, did you ever see off mosquito spray sold there? Looking for something reliable. I'd have to check airline policy on aerosols. I have seen it uh, sold on like Shopee and Lazada and places like that. Otherwise, you could bring off like a cream with the cream, not the aerosol kind. Yeah. You take on all the bills if you're a fool, play it poor. Yeah, don't, don't, um, <laughs> don't take on all the bills. No. A set amount and that's it. It doesn't matter if they get sick or maybe if somebody really got sick. But otherwise, a, a set amount and that's it. Never to be negotiated, never to be asked for more. That's that's it. Oh, Disney Orlando is outrageous. You know, I worked at Disney Orlando for a very brief period of time. I worked there for, I don't know, six months or so. I worked at a place called, uh, it was like a, uh, like a little island that was like a dance place, like uh, had clubs and bars and restaurants. It was called Pleasure Island. And um, it was fun because we would all get off of work and then we'd go out, all go out to the, like the club or whatever. And it was fun. It was a lot of fun. But um, yeah, uh, I think that's closed down since. But yeah, we used to get free passes into Disney. Hey, good evening, Earl. Greetings from Massachusetts. Easy to find off cream here. I always use it if I stay out after dark. Yeah, I would say you could bring the off cream or I think that can be found. There's another there's a brand here that's pretty reliable, too. I can't remember the name of it offhand, but um, I just wrote an article on my website. The three things that people that affect foreigners the most, you know, like medically. And uh, number one was dengue fever. And number two is motorcycle accidents and number three is like food poisoning so yeah hey good morning wandering doc good advice i heard if you are a giver set limits because takers don't have any yeah i slept in just woke up <laughs> japan's way cheaper than florida yeah i would imagine so in in now i guess the yen um is much better as well, right? So outrageous costs wise, I meant. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's absolutely outrageous. So hotel in Japan are up 30% year over year over the last two years. Yeah, they are. I was just going to look at the exchange rate to see what the difference is. We're going on August 9th. We're flying to Japan. I think we're there for two or three weeks. I can't, I can't remember. So you get 153.26 yen to the dollar, which uh, is pretty good. Even the peso right now is 56.61, which is really good as well. Um, Thai bot, 36.63. Vietnamese dong, 25,000 dong for $1. Uh, when Maya and I went to Vietnam, it was around 23. So it's heading in the right direction for us anyway. Uh, where's the best place to visit while in Cebu or an area island going for first time in two weeks? Uh, Cebu has a couple of good islands uh, nearby. You can go to Bohol very easily and very quickly. Camotes Island is another one. I'll, I'll put that in here. Camotes or Bohol. Those are both probably my uh, places that I would head to. <clears throat> Yen is weak. Hotels are still insane. Though. Yo, yeah. I've already looked at uh, hotel costs. and yeah, For sure. 
six years ago, I was looking to take my family of five to Orlando Disney for a week. Between park and mission, hotel, travel costs, and food, it would have cost over 10000 for a week. We went elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I don't know if we probably will never end up in Orlando. Um, just probably not going to happen. It's way too expensive. Probably would just go to the Japan Disneyland. Yeah, Vietnam. God, Vietnam is still the best bargain in Southeast Asia. I mean, Cambodia is pretty cheap too, I know. But Vietnam overall, I was living in Vietnam very nicely for about $850 a month. Now, is it maybe a little more expensive now? Probably. But Vietnam, for my and I, we spent three weeks traveling all around Vietnam, and I only spent a few thousand dollars. And we were doing guided tours and sleeper buses and nice hotels and eating out every meal, of course. Super inexpensive. So, According to the internet, Disney Japan runs from 45 to 70, depending on the day. That's cheaper than Disney, which is 99, according to the internet. Oh, that is, that is cheaper. Uh, Bataan is awesome. Yeah, I've heard that. Japan's expensive otherwise. I looked up, um, I watched a, a vlogger do a video just recently on one of those conveyor belt um, of sushi in Tokyo, and it wasn't that expensive. He, he, by the time he finished eating, he had all these plates around him, and I think he spent like 20 bucks or something. So, yeah, it'll be expensive, but. Hey, mornings, Mike. Greetings from Nha Trang, Vietnam. Ah. Oh place that's a that's kind of a resort uh, beach destination in vietnam uh that's terrific you worked at pleasure island i was there a few times when in orlando i remember it all mannequins yes eight tracks rock and roll beach club the fireworks wow yeah you got a good memory yeah i worked at a place called disney quest on pleasure island um it, at the time it was all virtual reality games just really like you could design your own roller coaster virtual reality and you would do this roller coaster <clears throat> excuse me and it was super cool for the time they ended up shutting that down and shutting pleasure island down altogether, which, which was a shame i saw i saw a lot of concerts at pleasure island pat benatar and a lot of people who had like has bens but still really good uh, we spent 13 days in Bali, all at luxury resorts, and it was cheap. AF. Hope Vietnam is similar. I think Vietnam is very similar. <clears throat> Top five cities you recommend to live for single guys in the Philippines. If I was a single guy, you would want to live, and you're going to do a lot of dating. Or it, it depends. If you're looking for a serious relationship or you just kind of want to be a single guy and just enjoy the dating. If you're going to be a single guy and just enjoy the dating, then Cebu, um, Manila, Bacolod, Davao, Agian de Oro. That's probably my top five. Just seen a couple from Seattle buy a house for 30000 in Japan on one acre. Countryside, not bad. No, that's cheap. A lot of Russians here, but it's quite nice with Vin Pearl Resort on the island off the coast of the city. Yeah, Vin Pearl, that's nice. What airline do you recommend when traveling from the U.S. to Manila? Um, I like Ava Airlines. I like uh, uh, Korean. I like um, Qatar. Those are some of my favorites. I live in Cebu City. Every time I'm in Lapu Lapu, all I see are hot girls smiling. Kind of wish I lived there. <laughs> yeah, I, I lived in Lapu Lapu, Mocktown, Newtown, and uh, I, I like Lapu Lapu a lot. Uh, so, anyway, I had just put out a. Um, I put out a question on my community tab. If you guys get a chance, uh, head over there and answer that. Basically, I was 
just kind of curious what attracts you to watch certain vloggers over other vloggers uh comment below let me know what other vloggers do you watch besides me of course uh i'm just curious to know you know to see what you guys uh who you guys watch and uh i might do some kind of uh um i might do some kind of um survey just to see who other people watch so just out of curiosity anyway here where are we sushi in tokyo around the fish market is delicious and it's cheap tiny restaurants and stalls you are there for the sushi not the atmosphere okay i will remember that um yeah there's, there's a lot of places i'll really start researching tokyo once I get back from the U.S. What is it about Russian people talk about in a negative sense? Are they like the plague? I don't think uh, it's that. I think anytime there are too many of one nationality all in one place, people don't seem to like it. For example, like uh, there's so many Koreans when you go to Mokhtan, Newtown, and Lapu Lapu. When you go to Behold, there's a lot of Chinese and Koreans. Uh, I think people just don't like it overrun by one big nationality, you know, instead of like a mixing of people. So, but for me, um, like my top two places in Vietnam were Da Nang and Da Lat. Um, those places were amazing. Um, we plan on going to Sapa. In December, which is kind of the cold area. So we'll see how it goes. My girl lives in Lapu Lapu. Don't look, she'll burn your eyes out. <laughs> I've heard that food poisoning happens in restaurants rather than back streets. Plus, I think I didn't Let me get the rest of that comment. Russians, okay. Putin, not. People complain that there are too many Aussies in Bali. I say, who cares? Yeah, how did you like Bali, by the way? Because we are actually kind of tossing up in the air, you know, whether we want to go to Indonesia. We've already been to Vietnam, so should we go explore Indonesia first? We might do that, too. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to talk. Guys, I'm going to 20 seconds. I just need to heat up my uh, coffee. So just a uh, quick second. All oh, right, we're back. Sorry about that, but uh, coffee had went cold, and we can't have that. So, thinking of traveling to Vietnam in July, someone online said the summer is not good because the Vietnamese are traveling then and everything's crowded. Any experience with this? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, well, I lived in Vietnam. You know, I lived in Vietnam for about six months, and then Maya and I did a three-week trip go uh not in the summer months so I, I totally agree with that uh bali is cool great food beaches and hiking but we stayed at hyatt resorts ritz on credit card points nice i would prefer to go get like a villa somewhere so maya and i will actually talk talk about that and maybe we'll change our mind about vietnam we'll see I watch a good mix of everyone because never heard of the Philippines till the all YouTube vloggers taught me. Also, my bio dad was a ham radio operator in the DMZ. Oh, okay. Street foods and festival vlogs from time to time. You know what? I, I think you are right. I should really 
Um, I'm not saying I'm not going to do talking videos anymore. I think I will, but I really should start taking it out to the street. Maybe Maya and I should get out on the Dumaguete boardwalk and eat some street food tonight or something. What do you think, Maya? She's taking a shower upstairs. She can't hear me. <laughs> but yeah, I actually I like that idea. Maybe we should maybe we should um, get out and interview some people. You've been more informative on the Philippines. Sorry, press sent before I could finish this. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Hyatt Aliya Villas. I can't even pronounce that. A thousand a night hotel, thirty thousand chase points, so free. Wow. Sauna all. Any areas you recommend while visiting Manila will be my first time visiting. Well, definitely check out. Uh, uh, Tagig, uh, and see the Venice Grand Canal Mall. Um, take a trip out to Tagaytay. It's not really that far. You can, from Makati, you can take a bus all the way out to Tagaytay. Um, of course, see the, the, the big mall, the Mall of Asia. Uh, Makati, BGC, check out some of the, you know, the malls there. So, I check your Vietnam city wrecks and planning my trip around it now. Thanks. Oh, okay, good. Bali's nice, but way too many tourists. Check out the island over Lombok and see if you might like that better. Oh, okay, thank you. You and Dan Vegabond Awake both recommend the second tier cities in Vietnam, not Saigon or Hanoi. Yeah, I mean... Saigon is okay, uh, but I like the second tier cities much better. Well, you're going to get mixed answers on this on how well you can live on two and a half thousand a month here. Again, it goes back to what your lifestyle is like and how you where you want to live. But I live very well on one and a half thousand in Cebu as a single guy in a nice condo. Now, if you would put me in that exact situation again, the condo rent has gone up and other things have gone up too. So 1.5 probably would move to about 2000. So I personally, I can live very easily on 2000 a month. And in fact, Maya and I usually live on around 2000 a month and that's eating out and going places now, if we're going to go travel, like we're going to go to Japan or whatever, obviously two thousand a month is not going to cut it. You got to you got to get out, and you got to spend a lot more than that. Do they sell shellfish street food? No, they don't. Not that I know of. Uh, the tone and inflection of your voice is quite understandable being hard of hearing. I'm usually depending on captions. Oh, okay. I've never heard that before. <laughs> uh, thanks to you for all your videos. You've really helped me out a lot. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. I pre appreciate the kind words. I can barely live well. I can barely live well in two and a half per month in Cebu. U.S. is like six to eight. Us is like six to eight. Yeah. I don't think wandering doc, I don't think you're the norm. I think you have probably have very expensive taste and you live a very high end lifestyle. And from, for most of us, uh, that's not the case. So I think you are the exception on the cost of living. I think the majority of foreigners, I, most foreigners that I talk to live between around 1200 and 2000 a month the majority so after pleasure island shut down disney shifted their nightlife to the atlantic dance hall and jelly rolls on the boardwalk not the same at pleasure island it was just a blast walking around there it was it was so much fun is there a cemetery dedicated to U.S. soldiers that died in the Philippines during World War II? I believe there is in uh, Manila. Um, somebody can let me know, but I believe there, there's a big one there. So they don't have crab there, like we have snow crab or king crab. They have crabs here, but you're talking about street food or just um, at seafood restaurants and stuff? They have crab, but they don't really have the really big king crab here. 
Uh, fair enough. I don't drink or smoke or go to bars. 2K is fine, though, if you don't include travel. Yeah, you're including travel. Um, what I'm saying is just uh, on a month-to-month, -month, regular month basis. Um, my travel is like going to waterfalls, going to uh, lookout points up in the mountains, or going maybe island hopping or things like that, things that are relatively cheap. But if I'm including where I'm traveling a lot, then yeah, I, I can see where you could get numbers like that. I live on two and a half a month in the U.S., and that is renting a nice house. I know I can live there very cheap if I wanted. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Um, some people live ridiculously cheap, and they live almost a Filipino-type lifestyle. But I didn't come over here to live like that. I came over here to enjoy life to the fullest, and that doesn't include eating rice seven days a week, and uh, sardines, you know. American Cemetery and BGC, largest foreign cemetery for U.S. soldiers in the world. Okay, that's what I thought. Yep, I do have to pay American taxes off of my Google AdSense and other, other sources of income, yeah. Do expats who are getting Social Security have to pay taxes? Wow. I'll let somebody else answer that because I, I'm not sure how that works. Um, we'll see if somebody else can comment on that. Not, I don't like to get into any kind of financial or social or like taxes type questions uh, because legally I can't really be giving out advice for things like that. I can answer broad comments or questions, but uh, yeah. So let's see here. Do you include grab orders and Amazon orders in your 2K? Uh, grab, we, we rarely do grab. We, I don't really like doing grab. I would rather go out to the restaurant and eat where it comes out on a nice plate hot. Um, I, I don't like when I get grab food and it's already kind of cold and contents have moved around, and, you, you know, so I don't really do grab food. Rarely, rare, rare, rarely. Uh, Amazon orders, most of the time I'm only spending 100 or 200 per month. I've included that in my budget, but there are months that I've gone expensive, you know, for example, like this office chair and Maya's office chair that we just bought, I think it was a month ago or so. You know, I spent a couple hundred bucks there. So that month I probably spent a lot more because I was buying some furniture. And things. Uh, hello, Jamal. Is it more expensive to purchase computer equipment in the Philippines compared to the U.S.? Yes, it is. Yeah, because most of that stuff's imported in. They don't really have any of that stuff here. I have found a lot of electronics are up to 30% more expensive. And they don't come with as many freebies as like in the U.S. So get your electronics in the U.S. or fly to Japan or China or wherever. I don't know. I'm pretty frugal and I think I can get by with around 1200 minimum in the Philippines. I think you can. I mean, at one time in Dumaguete, I was living on around 800 per month. That was during the pandemic, but a lot of people live like that normally. So, Manila American Cemetery and Memorial, JJ got it right. Very nicely, beautifully landscaped. Check out the reviews. Yeah, I'll have to see that sometime. I would love to spend a year in Vietnam. I'm not sure if any visa options for younger guys. Well, you can do three month multiple entry, which is great. Um, so basically every three months, fly out, apply for another one, come back in. You know, you fly out, spend a week, a uh, couple days in Thailand while you wait for the visa and then uh, fly back into uh, Vietnam. So you could do that. U.S. appliances will not work on 220 volt. Nope. They won't. Uh, but things like a laptop and cell phone chargers, they do. I tried the Jollibee diet for 30 days straight. You probably 
30 days straight probably equals 30 pounds of extra weight, I would imagine. So uh, surprisingly, if you only live on your SSA, you do not even need to file taxes. I know hard to believe my sister lives only on SSA. Oh, see that? I didn't know. I thought you still had to file taxes. Smartphones are 20 to 30% more in the U.S. And the Philippines spec phones are a bit worse features wise. If you're an American on Social Security, you should be paying Fed taxes state by state. State is state by state. If you ain't paying federal taxes or Social Security income, please tell us how you do it. When you use your interviews, I see you use a DJI. I'm thinking of getting one. Actually, when I do my interviews now, I now use this, Hollyland. Um, I'll show it to you here. It uh, comes in a chargeable case like this. Here's the receiver and then the two microphones. Plug and play. That's what I use. And uh, this can be found on my website under equipment that I use. I have that there. So actually, if you guys want to see... I do have an, an Amazon store that you guys can see. You can see the equipment that I use and um, other things. So uh, I'll put the link here in the box. Go to Hong Kong and buy your electronics. Japan will have stuff you have never seen before. Yeah, that would be, um, that'll be cool. I, I can't wait to get to Japan and look at some of that stuff. It'll be very, very cool to see that. When I get back from the U.S., I got to start saving for Japan and a car purchase. Those are the next two things that I'm going to be doing. So, big dreams, big expectations, big, um, big, big goals for savings. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, we've been going. Uh, we're, I don't know. I'll keep going. I'll keep going. I got nothing else going on right now, so we'll, we'll keep going for now. Uh, if you had to pick just one island to be your home base, where would it be? Well, right now, I'm very happy with where I live, very happy with the Dumaguete area. Sometimes I get a little annoyed with the traffic here. It's starting to really get bad sometimes, um, and that kind of annoys me. Uh, you have to kind of know what road. Once you learn all the roads, you learn that, you know, okay, I can take this way, I can go this way to get around the traffic, or uh, don't go at this time, it's, the traffic is crazy. So you start to learn those things. Um, but I'm still a big fan of Mindanao. I, I like Mindanao. Check the voltage rating on the brick you plug into the wall. It tells you what it can handle. I have computer science, electrical engineering back there. From IRS website, generally, if Social Security benefits were your only income, your benefits are not taxable, and you probably do not file, need to file a federal income tax return. There you go. So, like I said, I'm, I'm, I don't collect Social Security at this point, so I, I don't know. Depends on how much your SS is. If it's a smaller amount, you don't need to file because you fall under the minimum. I see. When I was in Duma, I rode a bike. Surprisingly, the traffic was only in the very center of Duma. Yeah, that's right. Um, really just the, the center. And it, once you get out, it's pretty wide open. So, yeah. It seemed like when you got just two kilometers outside, there was no traffic. Yeah, I would say that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, so, but that's my, that's really my only major complaint. Um, you know, people like to label it, uh, this is the, um, um, what was I going to say? This is the 
uh, drama get a so much drama that happens here. I don't really think that's the case. I just think it happened to be with a few people. And so it gets it gets over dramatized or it gets put out on YouTube and everybody thinks, oh, this place is all full of drama. Honestly, it's not. It's not. It's no worse than any other place. Uh, anytime, though, you get a large group of expats, Angelus, Subic, um, Dumaghetti, Cebu, you'll have some issues. And uh, when you get a bunch when you get a place that has a bunch of loggers, then uh, it's going to be shown and you're going to think, oh, wow, this place is just full of drama and expats. Most of the time in Dumaghetti, I'm not really around any other expats. I go to all the different places and I don't really run into a lot of expats. If you want to run into a bunch of expats, you can. Um, you learn the places that have all the expats, all the expats hang out at, Ground Zero, and, uh, the boardwalk and places like that. But honestly, uh, if you don't want that type of lifestyle and you want to kind of avoid it, it's very easy to do. Yeah, I, I like Mindanao. Um, that's probably where I would be living if it wasn't uh, here, if I wasn't married and I was a single guy. How far is Duma from Cebu? Oh, you can get to Cebu by, well, you can get to South Cebu in 30 minutes by, by a ferry. Now, if you're talking about to Cebu City, that takes about uh, two to three hours by, by ferry. What should I expect meeting my Filipina's girlfriend's family for the first time? Everyone will be there, parents, siblings, grandparents. We're going to have dinner and go to the beach. You can uh, expect lots of questions, personal, that, uh, that maybe in the West we find uh, intrusive or we would never really ask somebody upon a first meeting, but they might ask things like, so are you guys going to get married? Are you going to have kids? Uh, are you married before? Do you have kids? How much money do you make? Where do you live? Oh, how much? How much is that? They seem to ask a lot of that stuff that we find a little personal. Like we would never go up and just say, how much money do you make? <laughs> um, I just answer the money questions with, I, oh, I make more than enough or I make enough to, to live comfortably. You know, things like that. I don't give out uh, numbers. They don't need to be knowing numbers. Uh, but they will ask a lot of personal questions about their daughter. Are you going to treat her nicely? Um, do you have kids? Why did you get divorced from your last wife? You know, they'll ask a lot of stuff like that. Has the attitudes of Filipinos changed since you've moved there? I would say yes with um, in regards to the social media. So, yeah. Mark is actually someone I can't stand. He lied about buying a cruise ship and is with someone that could be his granddaughter. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't, uh, I don't want to comment on other vloggers, but yeah, I, I, that seems to be uh, one of the common complaints. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh. Let's see. Yeah, we'll go. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go. We'll go longer. Still here. We still have over a hundred in the room. So, yeah, yeah. I, I posted the uh, the question on the channel. I think I'll post another one. Uh, uh, you know, who do you watch the most? Um, just just out of curiosity. My guess, of course, is Filipina P. Everybody seems to watch Filipina P. Um, so yeah, I have a I have a couple of people that have reached out to me just this last week who want to do interviews with me, and they've got some interesting stories. So I'm kind of looking forward to uh, chatting with them uh, within the next week. I think one on Monday and one on Saturday, and so I, I've got some good videos coming up. I think I saw a few Brits and Aussies in Dumaguete with 18 to 20 year old smoke shows. Well, you'll see. You know a lot. Um, Mark is daddy. You're next. No, <laughs> I've already been fixed, so it, it ain't gonna happen. 
Uh, they were running around trying to please the girl. You can tell those girls ran the relationship. Yeah, for sure. I can always, my and I always comment when we see like a foreigner with maybe a beautiful Filipina, like in the mall. Now, you can always tell a Filipina that it really is in love and is proud of her husband or boyfriend, whatever, is usually side by side with them, holding hands, arm around the arm, something like that. And then you get the Filipina, Filipinas that are walking ahead or maybe walking behind the foreigner. And those are the ones, or they're sitting out at a restaurant and they're on their phone the whole time instead of talking to each other. Those are the ones where you're like, okay, she's really just in it for the money. Or she's she's not really into this guy. She's into, you know, uh, the here and now. This is what he can provide for me until something better comes along. This is, this is you know, because once a Filipina dates a foreigner and lives like if, let's say she was living poorly in the province and she elevated her life up to here by dating a foreigner most of the time they don't go back down to dating other filipinos most of the time once they've been up here they don't want to go back down here they want to they will continue to date foreigners that's just the way it is so anyway ah oh, my first uh cup of coffee on me for the day thank you so much peter i really appreciate the uh the super chat thank you so much uh, Brian, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I meant, uh, I meant uh, Peter, thank you again. Uh, Brian says, the P is nicer to look at. That's for sure. She is definitely prettier than me. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's and she's very well spoken and her videos are really done well. So, I mean, I, I applaud her, yeah. Old dog, P, sunshine shoulders. I watch old dogs, new tricks first, then you and every man has a story of time second oh man i'm tied with mark huh? because i love seeing foreigners finally getting to start a family i love your practicality thank you well i i've certainly did a 180 because my lifestyle a couple years back was very very different so 100 percent agree with you that's the same things yeah i i think so too my limit is zero or one foreigners in the philippine if she's been with more than one, I don't date her seriously. Yeah, you, you don't want a Filipina who's been with a bunch of different foreigners, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, hey, Joe, if you're in Hanoi, Vietnam, try the sleeper bus to Sapa. It's a six or seven hour ride and you can lay flat with a window cam. And I had a blast with toilet stops every two hours. Yeah, uh, Mai and I were using the sleeper bus from Ho Chi Minh to Dalat, from Dalat to Da Nang, and uh, from Da Nang all the way to um, Hanoi. So, yeah, we're very familiar. We were actually thinking of maybe trying the train. So, American Filipina Destiny, she lives near Davao, posts every day. Oh, I've, I've never heard of her. I'll have to check her out. Mark's partner looks depressed. She has to endure a lot for the money. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> uh, my girl from Bahol was with two Filipino guys long term and zero foreigners. She's great. No complaints. As far as a bank account, uh, probably BPI, BDO, Metro Bank. Those are some of the bigger ones. Much easier to find ATMs uh, around. Yeah. So, yeah, Sapa is uh, someplace we're really interested in. <clears throat> you and your wife should live two, three months in Vietnam, like Da Nang or Hanoi. Guaranteed you guys will like it. We weren't really super impressed with Hanoi, but Da Nang we liked. The lot we liked. Um, but the lot, I could see us getting a little bit bored, possibly. Uh, but Da Nang, no. Da Nang was amazing. Amazing. And Vietnam's got super cheap transportation. Uh, I mean, Thailand, too. Speaking of cheap transportation, my Thai roommate only paid 50 cents for the train ride from Bangkok to Cambodia border and $17 for the bus ticket to Phnom Penh. Wow. Yeah, that is, that is pretty cheap. So, anyway, 
let's see. We are still, let's see how many uh, likes I've got so far. We are at 99. I need one, uh, one more like on the live stream to get to my goal, which is always 100 likes in, uh, in a live stream. So what's the name of the place in Vietnam? The name of the place? Which, which place are you talking about? Sapa is great. Small town, but it can be foggy if it rains. There's a cable car that goes to the temples. I think it's the longest cable car in the world. Wow. Yeah, we went from um, in Da Nang, we went and took the cable car up to uh, Bana Hills. That was amazing. So uh, I think they're talking about Mark, every man has a story, Thornton. So I'm not talking about him there. <laughs> I, try to, I try to stay out of the, uh, the vloggers of vlogging drama um let's see here where are we yep yep you're welcome uh my roommate said hanoi has the second best dating scene only second to the philippines i wouldn't like the cold in hanoi though my roommate was born there and said you need a stocking and a cap coat yeah, it does get uh, cooler in Hanoi for sure. Absolutely. Uh, dating, I don't, I was always under the impression uh, Vietnam doesn't really do age gap too much. Yeah, that, that part is true. I've definitely heard that. Um, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, we went during the warm time of the year, so it was, it was pretty warm. I think we went, uh, yeah, we went during the summertime. Was it summertime? Uh, can't even remember now. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, I mean, we now we've been to Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia together. So we might do Indonesia or Sapa. We're going to, we're still kind of discussing it. But Sapa is... Kind of one of our main goals. Uh, fly me to the Philippines is a couple that lives in CDO, a little on the high side, mostly talk about relationships. Mostly on the high side. Uh, high side, like uh, as as what? Uh, they live in a more, like a more expensive lifestyle. It's wing is another good vlog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my newest roommate just came from Hanoi. She didn't want, she didn't bring warm clothes. It's just a sweater. She said her sweater was always soaked because of the rain. So she was always freezing. Yeah. Also try Hanoi, try the two day cruise of the bay. I paid about 600 uh, for two all you can eat plush cabin with a tub, lower balcony, calm waters, romantic. Yeah. Maya and I only did a day tour of uh ha long bay but uh we we enjoyed it we enjoyed it problem with vietnam is the country so long i have to split up my trip between the north and south it is it's um that's why we were there for three weeks we did uh south all the way to the north and we still didn't have time to see everything so gold is up right now yeah right now my uh uh, my crypto is definitely down. It uh, was a hard day for crypto the last few days, actually. Uh, Filipina P, definitely my favorite since I saw her on your channel. Other favorites, you, Isla Familia. It's me and that Philippines Life new channel. Okay. What do you think is currently the most popular city that the foreigners are flooding to in the Philippines? Cebu. Cebu is the number one tourist destination in the Philippines. Um, probably just because people land there and there's enough things to keep people active and uh, that's, where they, that's where they stay. Any plans to take my wife to Las Vegas in the near future? No. 
if uh, when I take Maya to the U.S., it's really going to be more, and we really are into the nature. I don't really think she would be that overly impressed with like Las Vegas. We're really big into the nature scene. We're not really big into the city scene. Um, Tokyo, we're excited about, you know, to see that, but no, we're not really much into the um, like gambling and stuff that wouldn't really appeal to us. Maybe some of the shows and things like that, but otherwise, um, yeah. Good. Cebu is the place that I was planning on going to because of the high population of women. I was so unhappy in Manila. Cebu, you'll find very good dating still. And uh, again, I got some articles on my website, geonthephilippines.com. And uh, like your first 90 days in the Philippines, why I think Cebu is perfect for a first time traveler, things like that. So you can check that out and, and see also, you know, where to stay, what hotels. Yes, they live in really nice house overlooking the river. She's a single mother, early 30s. He's probably 60-ish. CDL looking interesting. CDL is nice. Yeah, I did a bunch of videos in CDL when I was living there. How could I get a business going in Philippines? I know I would have to get in the girlfriend's name, was thinking of bushcraft or along those lines. Well, you would have to get on either a permanent visa, work visa, um, a retirement visa, marriage visa, something like that. You can't work or own a business otherwise and be working on it. Um, don't want to do that on a tourist visa. You can get uh, deported and blacklisted. Guy just got deported for that, actually. So, anyway, uh, guys, we'll go another uh, four minutes. Uh, we'll call it a day at the two hour mark. And uh, yeah, yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll call it a, a day at the two hour mark here. We've been going for a little while. Let's see here. My buddy rented a house, a gated community in Kampa, Cambodia for 250. That is cheaper than Old Dog's $360 house with a fence yard. Yeah, that's that is cheap. Take her hiking in Moab, Utah. Like, oh yeah, that's a great idea, Derek. That's actually uh, definitely an option. Uh, Gio, you and the missus would love New Zealand if you are into outdoors uh, pursuits and nature. So many things here. Bungie was started in New Zealand and many more. Too numerous to mention. Actually, we would love to go to New Zealand or Australia as well. So that that's an option. Uh, 250 includes free electricity for the air conditioner. Wow, that's extremely cheap though. So, all right, a few more minutes, guys. Any last questions uh, before we call it a day here? Any last, any last goers? Any last commenters? <laughs> uh, old dog, Geo, every man has a story. Down under rocks for sure, yeah. Actually, Maya and I have made probably the most, our most friends are probably now from Australia. Most of our good friends are actually uh, in Australia. Favorite city in Mindanao? Um, my favorite region, because uh, I don't have one exact uh, favorite um, city per se, but probably Davao, but uh, Bukidon. Bukanon region in Mindanao is so beautiful with nature. Just the waterfalls, the pine forest, the hiking. Um, you got these um, hikes up into the mountains where you see the clouds. You know, they call it the Sea of Clouds. So, yeah. Uh, Gio, have a great day. You're one of my favorites. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Might do a last-minute trip there in a few days. Yeah. Can you buy... Bar soap for washing and laundry in the sink. What store? I, mean, I haven't seen it in the stores here, but I'm sure you could order it online. So, all right, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. One last comment. How do you travel there from Cebu or Duma? You would have to get into uh, Cagayan de Oro, 
would probably be the closest or Davao. And then you could take a bus or a motorbike. I don't know uh, what's your motor trans. Do you have a motorbike? If you do, you could take a roll on, roll off to Kagi and De Oro and then drive up to it. So, well, thanks. Another super chat. I appreciate that, Brent. Thank you so much. And also for being a Utah uh, YouTube member. Appreciate that, guys. So if you guys aren't a YouTube member, you can help support me that way if you'd like and get extra content, a lot of extra videos, more benefits, and all my videos premiere first to the YouTube members. So thank you again, guys. Hoorah. Right, take care. I'll have to rent one. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Everyone take care. Ciao.